everybody. This is Carolina Millan. Welcome to a new episode of Beyond the Hustle. And I'm here today with Jeremy Slate. He is the CEO of Command Your Brand. How are you, Jeremy? Hey, I'm doing awesome, Carolina. I'm really excited to be hanging out with you here today. So when you started your podcast, like when was that? Uh, 2015? Yeah, so, so two, 2014, I started the first version. It was called Rock Your Life, uh -huh. uh, which it turned out was copyrighted. Somebody else owned the rights to. Oh. And um, it just wasn't very good anyway. Like, I, I know before we started recording here, we talked about, like, well, what happens if you select the wrong mic on your computer? That's how <laughs> yeah. every episode of this podcast was. It was just bad. It was very life coachy, which I'm the furthest thing from. So mm. it, it wasn't very good. So I quit it about two months. And then in November of 2000, started to create your own life. Create your own life. So... When you started the podcast, how did you at the very beginning? Because it's it's a little difficult, you know, to get people to yeah. listen if you don't already have like a big audience. So I'll assume you didn't have an audience yet. So how, I had how, like a hundred followers on Twitter at the time. So I had right. nothing. So how was the process to get the word out there? Like, what did you do to get people to listen to your podcast? And what do you think made it stand out? Well, you know, I think part of it is like the idea of like creating your own life is something a lot of people can agree with. So I think that does help initially. Like you have to have something people can buy into and a purpose people really like. Mm. Um, but at the same time, I'd failed at a lot of things. So I'm kind of like, all right, well, if I'm going to do this, like let's at least do it right. And then if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Like I can at least say it's the because I, I had looked at all those opportunities and I decided it wasn't the opportunity. It was me. Mm. So I think a lot of times people blame the thing that they're doing like, oh, well, that didn't work. Well, that didn't work. How about I didn't work? Um, so I looked at it and I'm like, how can I do this differently? And how can I take more responsibility for it? So um, I took a course around how to do it the right way. And I made a list of the top 100 people I most admired. And a lot of people are like, oh my gosh, how did you write down 100 names of people you wanted to interview? Um, I ran out by about 44. And then I went on Amazon and I started looking for different topics of people that are writing books about things. Um, and that kind of helped me like fill out that spreadsheet early on. But I really started reaching out to a lot of people like right at the gate. Like the first person I reached out to was Seth Godin. And he said, when you get to 400, come back to me and we'll talk about it. So, you know, he was episode 400 of the show. It just took it just took a long time to get there. Wow. Um, but like, you know, I thought big from the beginning and, and reached out, which is kind of one part that's really important. Like the quality of the content you're doing is, is super, super important. The other part of it is actually getting it out there because I think. Um, now it's harder than ever, especially because people just aren't as willing to share podcast episodes because there's so many out there. Um, but like, so you have to take the responsibility to get it out there yourself. Like whether a guest shares it or not, you have to be the one to get it out there. So mm -hmm. I knew early on that one of the key things that ranks you, um, and at, at that time it was iTunes. Now it's Apple podcasts, uh, was number of subscribers you can get reviews are great. They're nice for social proof. Um, so I was pushing for those as well but they don't really rank you. So what I did is I, I tried to get as many people as I could to subscribe to my show. Um, that included, like I had built a small email list, like there was a few hundred people on it. So I sent to that. Um, I texted every single person in my phone. Um, I sent out about 500 Facebook messages before they finally like took away my ability to like send links to people. Um, and it was like, it was like a seven day thing. I couldn't send a link to anybody. Um, so, so that was Facebook jail. <laughs> Facebook jail. I was in Facebook jail in the early days of Facebook jail. Um, so I, I tried anything you could try. And at the same time, like we would go out with like friends to like the bar or something. I would grab their phone and I was showing them how to subscribe to my show and actually doing that for them. So I knew it was really, really important at that time. Um, since that was 2015, iTunes new and noteworthy was still like a really big thing. So like getting into there got you eight weeks of featured free traffic. So I did enough to get featured and, and get a lot of attention early on. And we kind of maintained a lot of that audience we built from the beginning. What other, um, what other social platforms are you currently using? <clears throat> What's working for you right now to get attention, uh, to your podcast and also your company? Because I understand you also started a company, a uh, command your yeah. brand. So how are you getting exposure nowadays, like 2021? So for me, like what we do at Command Your Brand is we actually help people uh, appear on other podcasts as guests. So that's something I'm, you know, like we're doing right here. That's that's what I very consistently do every single week is I'm on yeah. three to five podcasts every week, you know, chatting with awesome people like yourself. So Thank and that's you. something I do week in, week in, week out. Um, so that's one thing that I've always done since I started the podcast and, you know, we'll continue to do. Um, cause you know, you also get to hang out with cool people and look, we better than that. Um, mm -hmm. so that's one part of it. The other part is 
we do a lot on LinkedIn right now um, because it's it's a really, really good uh, place to connect with people and get attention and stuff like that. Um, the algorithms changed a lot in the last year because you used to be able to like throw anything up there and get 100,000 views. Yeah. Um, you know, now and, and now even like, um, the likes to comments to, to views numbers like super low. Like, um, mm. you know, I, I get on average, like on a LinkedIn post, I'll get like a, a hundred to like 160, you know, like likes on a post. Um, and you know, 50, 60 comments, something like that. And that used to net me like at least 10,000 views. Mm. Like now that same thing, because they changed the algorithm gets me like 1500 views, 2000 views. Yeah. Um, so like it's getting engagement, which is nice. Um, but it's been something that's really helped us in the last, um, couple of years. Um, so that's really a lot of what I've concentrated on. It's just that the ability to get in front of people has gotten harder as the platform's changed. Um, the other thing that we do a lot as well um, is I do quite a bit on Instagram as well. Um, you know, like promoting, uh, using like headliner clips to promote episodes in my story and stuff like that. Um, but those are two really big platforms. Um, I've found, and honestly, maybe you found it to be different, but I found in the last like two years, Facebook has kind of become worthless. Um, so I don't get a heck of a lot of attention over there at all. Yeah, yeah. If you don't um, pay, unless you're, you're not, if you don't pay, yeah, if you don't pay, like not even organically on your own profile. And this is what I found too, which is really interesting. I don't know if you've seen this, like, let's say you write a post in your personal profile and you tag your page in that post. Mm -hmm. Um, it'll then crush the traffic on it and then forces you to reply to comments on your own post using your business page. So like, they've really tried to like make you pay. If you're not paying, you're not getting much. So I've found that like, yeah, our ads do great. But if you're not paying for it organically, I'm just not seeing anything over there. So if somebody were to start, you know, because um, I see I, I get a lot of requests from PR agencies like like yeah. the one you have uh, mm -hmm. to bring people on, on my podcast. And, you know, my podcast, I have I've had great guests, but I don't have a lot of listeners like it's not a, like a huge thing or anything. Mm -hmm. um, so what's your advice, you know, for people who are starting now and they want to get the PR thing going like they're like oh maybe I can be a podcast agent maybe I can get people on other people's shows uh, what is your advice where should they start how do you build those connections well so for me the one thing was just going on a lot of podcasts like I, I've just go on a lot of podcasts we, yourself <laughs> yeah before we even started the company I went on a lot of podcasts and but I, I've always been somebody too that I, I really like people so I genuinely like helped out a lot of podcasters like oh this broke cool i can help you fix that like you know what i mean so it's like i i have a lot of like technical knowledge and like expertise in that area so i've just you know i've, I've always been of the idea like, like if you help the space and other people do well you know you're going to do well you know in addition to that so for me it was going on a lot of shows and just being really helpful because that's it's just how i am so it kind of built a lot of those relationships and things like that uh now the other side of it is um my wife has been in PR for gosh, over 10 years at this point in time. So like, you know, like everything she learned about digital marketing, she learned from me, everything about PR, I learned from her. And so it's been really kind of a nice, you know, connection of our knowledge base. So, um, gosh, I don't want to say marry a publicist, but I did. Um, so like, you know, like it's kind of important to, to, to have those two things work together. Um, especially in, in new media, because you know, as much as I do, like the, the PR space and even the media space and everything else has changed so much. So it, it's really understanding how digital marketing works with a lot of this stuff, because there isn't just PR anymore and there isn't just digital marketing and there isn't just marketing anymore. They're, they've become very much intertwined. So you need to have a lot of that, that different technical knowledge. So I would say it's, it's, you know, making connections, being helpful, but at the same time, like you got to get the knowledge and you got to get the ability. And I think that's really, really important. Um, and, and also understanding that you've got to build systems and build a team. Like that's, that's super, super vital. Like I'm huge on like building processes. And what I mean by is everything that has been done in my company was first done by me. And then I found out what worked, found out what didn't work. And I wrote up every single process and I screen recorded it. So like, you know, like, because you, you've probably seen this with, with things that are computer oriented. When you try to document it, it's like 37 pages for a five minute video. So yeah. like you, you try to understand people have different modalities. So like every position in our company is, you know, written down word for word and it's videoed. So that's really, really important because otherwise people continually come back to you for questions or you never really get off of that job and you can't create the next job. So for me, that's what it's really been about is figuring out how I can enable a team and, and really do it in that way. How do you reach out or maybe now it's a little easier because you have the social proof, like it's a lot easier. It gets mm -hmm. easier to reach out to people when you have social proof. Oh, absolutely. Proof. 
But at the very beginning, and, and, and if somebody's listening here and they want to interview somebody who's like their idol or someone, someone really like big deal, and they don't have the numbers, the social proof, how do you craft that message so that it, they don't ignore you? So that even if they'll say no, like Seth Godin said no to me three times, at least he didn't ignore me. <laughs> but yeah. a lot of people just get ignored. So what do you think is the best way to send a message to an influencer you want to reach out to? Could it be for a podcast or something else to get their attention? So here's the thing. I don't know if I write the best, best messages. I'm just annoying. <laughs> like, so, so that that's one part of it. So like, um, like I said, I made a, a list in the beginning, like, you know, that was a, a Google sheet. Um, so it was a spreadsheet. Uh, you know, first column was all the names. Mm. Second column was last time they were reached out to column after that was who was spoken to. And after that, what was said? So like, I know like, Okay. Did they say go? I had one person tell me to go away and never contact them again. So, you know, I, uh, I'll, I'll leave that. I'll leave that out. I don't want to bad mouth anybody, but like, uh, I, I, I no longer follow that person um, because they were just so rude to me. Um, but like, really, the follow up was really, really key. Um, but I'll say like the way I structured my messages is I talked about the purpose of what I'm doing first, because I find too often people are like, they talk about traffic or they talk about whatever. But like, when you don't have that, you can't really talk about that. So I talked about the purpose of why I'm doing what I'm doing and why what they do matters to me. So that was really, really important. Mm. And, um, you know, those first uh, messages were kind of just a hope and a prayer because I hadn't interviewed anybody yet. So uh, what happened? <laughs> oh, that is awesome. I love that cup. Um, so like what I, what I then added is it was a purpose why it mattered to me. But then like, once I had like one or two people say yes, I added to that interview scheduled. Um, nice. So it was kind of like I hadn't done them yet, but they're scheduled. Here's a little social proof. Here's the people, the two people that just said yes to me. Um, and you may or may not have heard of them. So let me describe what they do. Um, so like that was kind of how it went early on. And then this, this spreadsheet, I follow up with people every 30 to 60 days because a lot of times you're just going to go out to the ether and you're going to hear nothing. Um, yeah. So, you know, you continue to follow up. Like it took me four years to get Dave Asprey um, from Bulletproof. It took me uh, two and a half years to get Grant Cardone. And I ran into him on the street in New York city. Um, so, and he, and, and that was kind of a cool experience. Um, it took me, you know, three years to do something with Gary V. Like it, it took a lot of time to like yep. get a lot of these people, but the follow-up is key and you're going to find up a lot of times you're going to get absolutely nothing. Like they're not going to say anything. What is, what is your advice in terms of, of branding? What would you recommend to entrepreneurs who are listening? They're struggling with creating content or maybe they're shy or they're, they, they don't know if they can start a podcast or, Hey, should I start a YouTube channel or what should I do? Uh, what, 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 what would be your advice to people who are um, looking to build their personal brand this year? So you probably wouldn't believe this, but before I started mm -hmm. a podcast, I was shy. Mm -hmm. um, and it was, just you. Fact, it was just the fact that I was consistently having to talk to people. Like I, I, I hadn't even like talked in front of a group of people before. So it was like, um, like other than students. And that was kind of combative. Um, but like, um, I was a very shy person before I started a podcast. So like the, the number of times, like delivering a message, the number of times talking to people, the number of times doing an interview, like it made me more comfortable in that. So that was really important. So like the, just the personal development aspects of it have been great. Um, but I'll say at the same time, like if you're planning on starting a podcast, like, you know, be different, like don't do exactly what everybody else is doing because there are, you know, a million podcasts out there now. Um, like I think it's like 1.7 um, as of this time this year. So there's a lot of different podcasts out there. You cannot like go out there and just copy the exact same formula that somebody else has because there's no reason people are going to check out you. So you got to niche down, you got to be different and you got to be willing to be in it for the long haul. Like I think a lot of people like they're in this for, you know, two or three months and they haven't, you know, made the magical internet money yet. So they quit. And I, and I think it's about seeing the bigger picture and, you know, building that for, you know, a year, two years and being willing to be in that because then you really do start to build some brand equity. Um, and at the same time, knowing like who are the opinion leaders in your space that you need to connect with? Who are the publications in your space that matter? Like, have you built a local media and press portfolio? Because that's really what a brand is. A brand is being different. A brand is getting it out there and a brand is being willing to build it and not just waiting for like, you know, one TikTok video to go viral and then all of a sudden like people know who you are. Like it just, it doesn't work like that. It really doesn't. Oh,